Hi everyone, I am Aditya and welcome back to the channel. I just checked out of my room. The room was good. It was clean. Bathroom was clean. And the breakfast was normal. Like this is the kind of breakfast I have eaten everywhere in this trip. Yeah, bread, cereals, milk. Sometimes fruits will be there, sometimes not. Our hostel Bruegel is named after Peter Bruegel. And he is buried in the church. He worked on the unification of the Dutch and French people in Belgium. There are some rift between these two groups, kind of like 60-40 percentage of uh, Dutch to French people living in Belgium. And if you did not know, Belgium gained freedom from the Netherlands, Fannigans and Maloney. So these are the two areas where the French and the Dutch people stay. Previous to World War region where the French people were staying, it was more uh, developed and economy was good because of the steel manufacturing and all those uh, factories. Then after the World War, the manufacturing was stopped. Either they were disrupted uh, during the war or it was closed down. And then uh, the region where the Dutch people are living. So this got boomed. Uh, and the other side of the Belgium, the economy came down and the development came down. So even now, the unemployment rate there is more than double of what is in the Dutch region. So there were many reforms in the law to improve, but still that is the situation. Peter Bruegel, he worked on the unification of them. And yeah, the hostel is named after him. Currently, I am going to the railway station. I wanted to even go to Brussels, but due to time constraint, I couldn't go. Uh, yeah, so I'll be going to Ghent and my train is at 8.50 and it will take around 45 minutes to reach Ghent. I'll catch the train and then I'll see you guys in Ghent. It's 10 o'clock and I reach Ghent. We'll go to the castle as the first point. Just now the doors to the castle opened and I have bought a ticket so I am going in. Since I had the e-ticket, I came in directly by scanning. Uh, it started to rain again. Can you see those hatches there? So when the enemies came here, uh, and when they used to stand here to enter, they used to pour hot oil from those hatches. So yeah, this bed is really good. It doesn't tell only about the, but also has some comedic sense. I am at the rooftop, so there is a river and the Vikings from Iceland came from this river conquered Swedish, Norway, everywhere and once they came here, the warriors from this region from the Flanders, they went and they fought the Vikings and they lost Guide explains that he came from the ancestors who fled over covers but survived so it's really good it gives you the history, it gives you the background but it adds this sense of humor, that touch, that is really good. The castle of Counts was a symbol of abuse of power, feudal repression, horrific torture methods and a cruel inquisition as far as the people of Ghent were concerned. The castle boasts a unique collection of torture equipments. What used to be the pantry now features the torture equipment which is displayed in a suggestive executioner's cabinet. Some of the examples are there was an actual sample of guillotine which has a sack on the other side to hold the head after it falls off. Right now I am going to a place called Grass and Convelle. On either side of the river there is a street and colourful buildings. So everything now is walkable distance. Only to go to the railway station it's far and there is a problem with my ticket. Uh, whatever the train ticket I have and the timing and the train. I don't think it exists so I just checked in the DB app which I use in Germany I just I just wanted to check the platform and wanted to see if it works here uh, because these are not German trains and it worked 
and I couldn't see my train or any train at that time. Then I saw in Google and in maps also the train does not exist <laughs> and there is no train in that time. So I'm gonna go one train earlier. My train was at around 3.15 or something but there is another train at 2.50. So I'm gonna target that to reach Antwerp at 4.30. Uh, because I have to change the train in Antwerp to go to Amsterdam. Uh, I think I think the ticket will be applicable throughout the day to any train but in the same road. This is the Corenle street and that is the Gasle street and whatever the bridge you see that is the St. Michael bridge. I came here first and I am getting the views of that street. Next I will cross the bridge and go there and get the view of this street. So both the streets are famous here because of its architecture, the color and there is a cathedral at the background so this is really picturesque I again went back to the castle because near the castle only I had seen an umbrella shop. Uh, I bought an umbrella for 10 years. Finally, I will be able to <laughs> manage it rain because yeah, it was a headache actually. To be honest, I should have done this in two trips ago when I went to Croatia. This is Saint Nicholas Church, and that is Saint Bavo's Cathedral and there is Belfort Tower as well. Let me cross the street. From here you can see the Belfort Tower more clearly. So, three beautiful, magnificent structure. And if you just turn this side, you will see these houses or buildings with amazing architecture and colors. This reminds me kind of like Florence because everywhere you go, the city is very beautiful. I bought the ticket to go to the top and I have to run to the entrance. So the bells which you see here, each bell weighs different and each bell has a unique sound, unique harmony. From the top you will obviously get the whole city view and this is the next location which I'll go. It is St. Bavo's Cathedral. The Belfort Tower is in between the church and the cathedral and uh, I hope once we go down. <laughs> There is the castle which we went in the morning. 
so we went like that and crossed the bridge and came here and getting down the steps are too narrow and if you are claustrophobic it's better to come from the lift itself All these three structures are huge actually. I'd seen the images in Google obviously before coming and I did not think it will be this big but only after coming here I got to know the sheer size of it. So now I'm going to the town hall even that is just close by. I think this would be my last destination because there is another graffiti art street I wanted to go but if I go there I may be a little bit late to the railway station. I just wanted to get a glimpse of this graffiti street. That side is the cathedral, and you have to come here, and it's hidden in a small pathway. This is a really cool street. It stretches a long way, and it's quite. It will be some quite time in this touristy place. There are several shops which sell fries and I tasted the famous Belgian fries also known as french fries. Then I headed towards the railway station by walk instead of taking the tram so as to get a glimpse of Ghent outside the old city centre. After reaching Amsterdam, I made my way towards my hostel across the river in a ferry. The ferry is free of charge and is running every 5 to 10 minutes. It was very windy and continuously raining in Amsterdam similar to how it was in Ghent. This is it for now. Thank you for watching. If you have any queries, you can always add a comment and uh, you can ask. I'll definitely come back to you. Uh, if you like the video, please give a thumbs up, add a comment. And if you don't like the video, you can still add a comment and tell what you don't like about it. Uh, I think there's some party going on there. It looks nice with light. And in this climate, this looks nice actually. I will go inside the room. I will freshen up and I will plan for tomorrow so yeah thank you for watching and see you tomorrow the first thing which comes to your mind when you think about Netherland is windmills in the next episode I visit Zanzesh Kans best known for its collection of windmills and the wooden houses that were relocated here I also explored the beautiful villages outside of the Amsterdam city stay tuned